Around this time last year, Brigador was unleashed unto the world. It was a game that placed you on the surface of Solo Nombre, a space colony which until very recently had been under the ironclad rule of the dictatorial Great Leader. Turns out when someone like Great Leader unexpectedly kicks the bucket, chaos soon rushes in to fill the power vacuum left behind. Enter the Brigador. The name given to mercenary pilots, which in this case are contracted under an organization with one simple aim. Liberate Solo Nombre by any means necessary. Those means, as it so happens, include rocking up in your chosen mech, tank or anti-grav vehicle and completely obliterating your objectives alongside, well, everything else in the way because in the world of Brigador, collateral damage isn't penalized, it's rewarded. You'd think with a killer hook like this, people would be chomping at the bit to play a game like this. I know I was. That said, I could understand the trepidation of some. This is a game that is decidedly old school in its execution, couching its action in a fixed isometric perspective and boasting a style of play that wasn't the most, let's say, intuitive to get your head or hands around. So what has this recently released Armored Up Edition done to remedy this initial learning curve? Well, more tutorial missions, loads of them in fact, so much so that they seem to take up maybe a good third of the main campaign mission list. The upside to this is that where you originally had to learn the ins and outs of various vehicles by just launching yourself into a mission and hoping for the best, you now have a much more gentle curve that eases you in as opposed to flinging you head first. The mech, the tank, and the anti-grav vehicles are all introduced one by one, the handling and capabilities spelled out so you know exactly what you're dealing with by the time you're ready to shake off those training wheels and get stuck into the action proper. All the same, no matter the preparation, Brigador will still manage to kick your ass. Someone somewhere on the incoherent vastness that is the internet said it best when they described Brigador as a cross between Future Cop LAPD, an old favorite of mine, and Hotline Miami, a much more recent favorite of mine. And once you discover how Brigador wants you to approach its missions, it's hard not to see why. You'd think with a big stompy mech or heavily armed alternative at your disposal, you'd be in with a pretty good chance of pretty much obliterating everything else in your way, but it just turns out that more often than not, you'll have a small army of similarly armed machines ready to reduce you to just a smoldering pile of metal. That means scouting ahead is of paramount importance in Brigador. Before you even consider pulling the trigger on one of those great big guns strapped to your vehicle, you'll need to know what exactly you're wading into. You'll need to know if that first shot is going to summon a tidal wave of death in your general direction, and it quite often does. To that end, you can handily focus your camera viewpoint to your aiming cursor, allowing you to see further ahead, spotting threats before they have a chance to catch you by surprise. That said, knowing where the enemy is is only half the battle, but when it comes to engaging them, Brigador gives you a pretty nice range of choices. Depending on your loadout, you might want to lay down some smokescreen and flank them. Maybe you'll deploy the cloak, stroll right past like a ghost the size of a small building, or maybe you'll immobilize them with an EMP, rendering them helpless before you obliterate them. Then again, there is always the option of just busting down that reinforced wall nearby that they think is so safe and just unleash hell through that new line of sight you've opened up. When it comes to selecting which of these loadouts to run with, this is where I think completionists will find themselves in a special kind of hell. You see, for most main missions in the campaign, you have the opportunity to complete them with a selection of four unique Brigadors, each with their own drastically different loadouts. At the top, you'll usually find the beefiest of the bunch. It might be a heavily armed and armored mech, a several story high tank made out of cars, or maybe a hovering juggernaut. But as you go down that list, you'll typically find that the pickings get progressively slimmer and trickier to handle. Personally, I like to think of these options as your chosen difficulty setting, usually bottoming out with a lightly armed vehicle, boasting armor with all the effectiveness of two-ply toilet paper. I have to confess, it got a little masochistic for me below the first two options on the scale, often an exasperating level of difficulty where sometimes you need to creep as quietly as a several-ton mouse just to survive a level. 
Call me a filthy casual all you like. All I know is that I like my implements of destruction as big as a house, hard to destroy, and preferably bipedal. So, how about the missions themselves? Well, if I'm gonna be honest, they all follow a pretty simple template. Go here, blow that particular thing up, feel free to destroy everything else while you're at it, get to the exit, and repeat. Where the true variation comes in here is within the environments themselves and the approaches that you choose to take. Solo Nombre is host to a variety of places soon to be visited by the mechanized ferry of high explosives, ranging from swamps to farmland, industrial zones, city streets, even the occasional suburb with green lawns and hedges. Sometimes it just feels like you're stomping through someone's intricately designed sci-fi sim city map, tearing down what it probably took quite a lot of effort for some poor bugger to build. Nigh on everything in these zones is destructible, and it is Oh, so satisfying. Even the ammo refueling points that you may need to visit mid-mission blow up pretty good too. Just make sure you're positioned far enough away from them because, yeah, turns out you can get blown up in the process as well. As I alluded to earlier, for all of the careful planning you might put into your approach, when you finally do unleash the hounds, it tends to have a similar effect to kicking the hornet's nest. So not only is it prudent to have a plan of attack, it is also extremely wise to have a plan for the occasional strategic retreat. The need for this is magnified by the use of specialized enemy units, some of which can kamikaze into you, some can slow you down while others bore lasers into your face, or you might simply encounter enemies that can detect your presence and put the entire area on alert, resulting in enhanced enemy shielding and the raising of reinforced barriers. You can deal with this situation in a few interesting ways. Firstly, you could always hide just activate a cloak and stomp on by, or you can have some fun and blow them up before they have a chance to receive and transmit. If that's not enough, you could even seek out that particular area's broadcast towers. If you blow them up, you remove their ability to transmit. No transmission, no alert, no problem. Alternatively, you can also seek out the other common points of interest that you'll find across the many missions of Brigador, such as the substations. Blow them all up, you cut off the power, robbing the enemy of the ability to deploy those defenses. It's this freedom of gameplay which is what really makes Brigador for me. Being presented with this intricately detailed and designed playing field and just figure out the best way to exploit the cover, draw enemies into bottlenecks, and then just go completely ham on the entire thing, blowing up petrol stations and gas lines just for shits and giggles. If I'm gonna be honest though, as great as it is turning houses and enemies alike into piles of smoldering rubble, especially with that fantastic soundtrack by Makeup and Vanity Set just thumping away in the background, the repetitive nature of the mission structure did wear me down after a while. If anything, this is a game that seems to work best when taken in bite-sized chunks, a few missions here and there, rather than marathon sessions. It's not like the missions in Brigador are in short supply either, far from it. Once you've burned through the main campaign, totaling something close to 40 missions with tutorials included, you'll find that there is actually a use for all that hard cash you've been earning with your wanton destruction. Enter Freelance Mode. Freelance mode is where Brigador throws open the gates and just gives you this buffet of options. It's stuffed to the gills with pilots, factions, vehicles, weapons, and missions. Granted, only a small selection of them are unlocked to begin with, but if you've played through the campaign to a decent degree, you'll have more than enough cash kicking around to unlock a fair amount of these new toys and get yourself rumbling. It's almost a dizzying level of choice. Picking a pilot can determine how tough a mission run starts and ends, with one pilot literally allowing you to just stomp around completely unchallenged if you feel like getting a feel for the environment first. The choice of vehicles and weaponry though, that's what really gets my head spinning. There's just so many of them, and you shouldn't feel wary of experimenting with them either because you still get paid for the destruction you cause even if you fail a mission, meaning you can pump that cash back into the unlocks, strap on something more effective, and just try it all over again. It's that positive incentive that keeps encouraging you to push forward and just level everything that stands against you. If anything though, I have to say I don't think that Brigador is a game that everybody will get. It's, as I said earlier, decidedly old school in its execution, and for some, getting to grips with the way some of the vehicles handle here may simply break the enjoyment factor for them. 
Brigador is the kind of game that on the surface gives the impression of a mechanized power trip, but the reality is it's a game that requires a fair amount of quick thinking, accuracy, situational awareness, and most of all, patience. You'll be retrying some of these missions a fair few times before you finally crack them. Being kamikaze to death for the fifth time in as many attempts will certainly test your resolve on that front. For me, I can safely say that I very much enjoy what Brigador is selling. I love the way it looks, I love the way it sounds. The core gameplay is tremendously challenging, occasionally to the point of frustration, but I feel that may be perhaps in part due to the tricky controls, but nonetheless quite satisfying to overcome. But in terms of true hang-ups, I feel like the lack of mission-to-mission -mission variety in regards to objectives occasionally left me wanting, a little bit in the cold. Additionally, if you're not a fan of flavor text and pouring through reams of world-building lore, much of Brigador's intricately designed world may be a little lost on you. It's a game that requires a fair bit of investment on part of the player to allow themselves to get into the rhythm of what Brigador is offering, and if you've got the time for that, if you're in the mood for something harking back to classic games such as Syndicate, Crusader, but with more of a modern bit of polish and featuring big stompy mechs, I think Brigador might very well be something that you'll quite enjoy. But there you go, that's what I thunk of Brigador Up Armored Edition. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, feel free to let me know what you thought in the comments, and feel free to check out all the other wonderful videos that I have here on this humble channel. This has been Mr. Icarus, thank you very much for watching, Icarus out.